Hello, can you hear me? It's me again. Um, before we get started, actually, I would like to give my aloha to the Zoom land people who cannot probably see me right now, but they can see the screen, and that is mean. So um, I'm going to like to open up with a song. Um, this song is called There Goes My Hilo A. Eh? It's a song that I wrote about Hilo. So I took a trip all the way down to see the beauty of my hero town. And I went with a group of my friends. Oh, yeah, the walking and the talking never really true. Hold on. Stop. Hold on. It never really truly ended. You see, we started out on our trek down the street. Papaya farm and be keeping honey farmers did we meet coconut bread dollar fifty oh so sweet I said hey there goes my hilo eh. okay everybody said there goes my hilo eh there goes my hilo eh Pronunciation is perfect. Okay, so that's the end of every verse. We're gonna say that. Okay, here we go. Set a little further down in a shop I see. A cow cow her auntie looks familiar to me. She gives us all a sample of lotion to try. Peacock it for the ladies, coconut oil for the guys. We said, hey, what is it? Hey. Okay, here we go. We're using our voices. I sit and leave the fruit down in a shop I see. A young looking brother uh, from Manila, Philippines. And we asked him about his story. His story unfolds, and then we all trip out. He's 85 years old. We said, hey, ah, uh, there goes my people. Hey, 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 hey. The city and down the road I see a family of lobsters walking on two feet and we ask where they're from. They joyfully say Wisconsin and Illinois of the USA. I said, hey, what do you say? There goes my kilo. I said, hi, na, na, my, let the story be told about the group of funny locals round them downtown roads. We met a lot of people from all over the place, different skin color, but the same human race. I said, hey, what do you say? There goes my kilo. Hey. I said, hey, what is that? There goes my kilo. Hey. Thank you. Next, next slide, please. <laughs> it's really important. Um, but anyway, um, in case we miss it, uh, the next one. No, the next one. Okay. Um, this is our event for today. Um, it's really important for us to, uh, for us as Zero Waste Hawaii Island, to have really worked hard to re-indigenize the way that we come into and interact with each other. And I'm not gonna say like serve the community because we're part of the community, so. We're really just working to do our part, you know. Um, but this, this, the spirit of this gathering today, uh, we began with pule, we began with me'ai, we began with music, we began with aloha, we began, there's lay involved. Um, all of these things are necessary when we're looking at community engagement and community feedback. And that's what we know. That's just, just ge generally, that's what we know. So just mahalo for holding some space in the beginning for us to get into a good place for us to feel free to open up our, our leo and really voice our manao in a good way. That's why there goes my hilo is actually a strategy to get us to um, open up and really, really be okay to poha kaleo and project our voice as we're lending feedback. Uh, so Zero Waste of you can next slide. So Zero Waste of Island, uh, we're here today to present a little bit about some of the work that we've been doing, um, present some ideas to you folks. Uh, we have a full system design document that we were able to, to complete and um, that's available for review. Um, but today we're just giving a synopsis of it and seeing if anybody has any mana'o before we, we move forward with it all. So um, we go to the next slide, this the, the agenda, next slide. <clears throat> so this is our team. Um, 
Oh, you go. I cannot see you over there. You go. You go is over here, everybody. Because, because I don't know. It's it's real. It's like 10 o'clock p.m. I think where she's staying now. So, but luckily she's joining us here. So, um, can we get a round of applause for our staff here? Um, so very thankful. Um, we 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 were able to provide lay um for the wonderful folks who are honor honor honorable um contributors today. So you'll see some folks with lay. Um, Ellen Okuma, can we get a round of applause for Auntie Ellen? She's been a wonderful kupuna who has so, so dedicated so much of her life to showing up above and beyond in so many ways to um, make sure that we're well personally, but also in the work that we do to Aloha Aina. Uh, and then can we get a round of applause for Yuko, who is here? When I say next slide, it's her over here, next sliding, slide to the left. Um, and then um, <clears throat> Devin is not here, but can we get a round of applause for TC, who is our wonderful ticket giver? Super important for us to make time to mahalo all of these Hana Lima or Hana Manavalea who dedicate so much of their life to, to supporting the work. Um, and I don't know how come TC, I don't know, I don't know how come you stay, you know what I mean? But one, one more round of applause, okay, only one. For all of our hands that came together. Um, we're gonna talk about some of our partners a little later, but we also have Peter uh, and Craig Volks from the county. Um, Council Member Jim Kagiwara is also here and has been heavily involved. So just mahalo to you all. Mahalo to the tutus and the papas and the keiki outside, the kanui ohana, all of the community members we've been working with. Nui ku mahalo ya oko and round of applause for everybody here. Yeah, eola. Eola. You can next slide. Nukia. So what even is this? We just came for the beef law. What, 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 who are you guys? You know, <laughs> is, is some of the question that the question is. Um, so we're Zero Waste Hawaii Island, and um, Zero Waste Hawaii Island has been around since, I think, before 2019 in, in many um, versions, but we, we've been really active since then. And um, when people think Zero Waste Hawaii Island, they, you can go next slide. They think about um, the kind of people that they just go pick up rubbish, like clean, clean the beach day or... Um, please reusables, no rubbish, please. You know, it is they're not thinking aloha aina. Usually when you think zero waste, you don't think like plant kalo and be in the ulu and be in the in the forest, be in the aina. You don't think reconnecting to our aina aloha or to our homestead or to the sources of our food. Um, and so my role <clears throat> with Zero Waste of Ayala has been to re-indigenize the way we kind of look at things to kind of get us together with these values and to kind of re-up re our vision and such. So um, our mission is to engage diverse of the island communities to achieve zero waste. Our vision is to create more opportunities for Kanaka Aina Akua leadership through the restoration of family systems, community systems, and equitable policy. So it's not only about um, the rubbish that we make, it's more so about the source of our aloha for each other, which will result in less rubbish. <laughs> if we're not going to Jack in a Box and we have actually more time with our ohana at home, there's less rubbish. Uh, if we're making time to, to sit down for a meal instead of 7-Eleven for 10 kids, there's less rubbish, you know, and, and that's a very real thing. So anyway, th that's been part of my role. Um, I want to take some time to mahalo the keola nui ohana for being so involved. You can see our new logo here, kei pa pa ilima for the keola nui, uh, for Deva of keola nui consulting, and for Kumu because you're always meeting in your office. Thank you so much. Um, so our our logo is this this kalo leaf inside of Zero Waste Hawaii Island. This this specific taro variety is mana ulu. Uh, is inspired after the mana ulu leaf and and um and plant and the mana ulu is yellow. I don't know if you folks ever saw that color. It's yellow and it's gummy. It's so ono, but it it grows into like if you have one huli and some of the huli grow into two huli, and so similarly, if just one of us starts to bring our containers when we go luau parties like baby parties, if just one of us does that, somebody else would be like, hey, that's cute your thing. And then you don't have to throw it. I'm going to bring mine next time. And then that's two. And then two more. And then two more. You know, so that's the idea behind our logo. And so mahalo, Deva, um, for all your work with us in establishing that. Okay, next slide. Uh, some of our, uh, our values are depicted here. Uh, can everybody say kanaka? What is kanaka? Isn't it like kanaks? Like, okay, okay. Um, kanaka. Everybody kanaka. Okay, kanaka, it means it means person or people. 
but we're focused on individual wellness. And these are all of the olalo no eao that we kind of shared through the community engagement processes that we've, we've been doing in the system design program, but just, just some background about who we are and what, what we're, we're here to do uh, in overall. We are here to concern ourselves with the wellness of the people. Um, so some people are just like, you have to use less, less rubbish. But if you don't have access to clean water to wash your dishes, if you don't have access to an icebox to be able to cook, if you don't have access to, to appropriate housing to be able to live a stable life to wash your dishes and use make less rubbish, you're going to use what yet. And so we have to consider those things too when we're looking at zero waste. And it's important not, not to judge folks who need to have the water bottle or whatever it is that they have, because maybe they don't have a, a good stable home. So anyway, we're considering those things. Everybody say Aina. Aina. Aina is land, but we use it to, to refer to environmental accountability, which is place-based action and leadership and affection for Vahipana. So not just aloha aina, love the land. No, no, you have to have a specific relationship with specific places. Um, so specifically Lokoaka over there uh, across from Seaside, specifically Kukahaula of Mauna Awakia, like specific places. So let's, as, as we do this work of reusable foodware and what we're here to talk about, let's also hold space for that. Everybody say Akua. This is spiritual connection to soil, food, nature, and forest system. So this is a value that we have. It's important to maintain a personal spiritual connection to the sources of our food and such. Uh, everybody say Ohana. Ohana is family, uh, family engagement. It's the restoration of family honor through health, presence, and connection. Um, for example, I'm very proud to come from multiple generations of pig farmers. Um, a lot of us come from long generations of fisher, fisher people, uh, people who are of the earth. Um, some of us are reclaiming and re, re um, introducing ourselves to our family practices, but that is completely, totally zero waste, and we love that, and so that's part of it. Uh, and we say kayaulu, kayaulu, kayaulu. It means community. Um, we we try hard to defer to the multi generational dwellers of each each place and space especially when we're doing um, consultations or interviews. Good to see Uncle Sam, Kalua folks. Uncle Sam, can you use your hand? Uncle Sam, what do you say? All the way in the back, Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uncle Sam is um, from over here in Kelkaha, so we were happy to do an interview with him. Um, so yes, deferring to the consult of community, communities, multi-generational dwellers. Okay, everybody say Aupuni. Aupuni is civic duty and governance, which is kind of where our reusable foodware program fits into. Um, but it has to do with encouraging community participation in processes of governance. Um, so very grateful to share some of these values with you folks. They, they kind of help tie in what it, why Biflua, why lay, why music, um, and also why reusable foodware. So um, we can go to the next slide. Um, this is just a, a, a quick snapshot. So these are all of the values. This is part of our mural. Um, project, but over there, do you see all the way to the right, it says Alpuni. That's the reusable foodware project. So even though this presentation is about that, this is all important um, to us and also hopefully to all of us, you know, when we're looking at zero waste. But just to kind of contextualize a lot of the work that we hope to be doing um, and have done and will do in the future, but also our project rate is, is all the way over there when we're looking at bigger systems. Okay, next slide. We can go next slide. Okay, everybody say ho keo ho i ho i. Ho keo ho i ho i. Yeah, ho i ho i, it means to um, return. So I know we don't say returnable, we say reusable, but it, it makes sense to say ho i ho i. Um, if anybody is not familiar, there's a whole document of, of natural laws that are really, it's awesome, we should look, Anyone who's interested, we should just know these kanavai. But there's a law, there's a natural law in the Hawaii world that says that when allowed the opportunity, land, ocean, and kanaka return to health. It's the law of regeneration. So a lot of us, we're not allowing our, our spaces to return to health. And we're making all any kind of putting more rubbish, more rubbish, more rubbish. Um, so this is something that we'd like to um, encourage folks to learn more about is these natural laws just as we go. But ho keo ho'i ho'i, it means um, 
returnable foodware. So that's the term that we can use as we're as we're working with the with the system. You can go next slide. So when we're looking at reusable foodware, it has to do with reducing waste, like making less rubbish. And ideally, when you go into the restaurant, instead of a throwaway kind of paper plate or whatever, you'll be able to check out a reusable one and then return it to a bin and, and it'll be washed and reused, um, washed really well in, in accordance to the Department of Health Standards. Um, there's a lot of really important benefits to reuse. So for example, in Hawaii, there are 200,000 plus residents. There are 15,000 plus commercial businesses. This is Hawaii County. 1.5 million plus tourists annually. So that's a lot of people making a lot of opala. And if we, if we, do, does anybody know where our rubbish goes? Show of hands. Okay. Okay. Laura. Pu'u Anahulu. Can everyone say Pu'u Anahulu? Can we get Laura a ticket? Let's get Laura to yeah. Laura's like, yeah. <laughs> um, this is Po'uanahulu, and this is the landfill. It's kind of hard to see, but there's there's trucks. Um, so everybody's trash. Every so somebody's like, no, no, mine goes to Panava because the dump. No, the dump is going into a Matson container, and all of our rubbish is being shipped to Po'uanahulu. Everybody, everybody. There's one landfill available on Hawaii Island, totally. So every piece of rubbish goes to this specific place. And it's important for us to realize that our rubbish doesn't go away when we throw it away. It doesn't go away. It goes to Pu'uanahulu, which is the, which is beloved homeland to many OEV Hawaii people. So we have to develop a relationship with our material things before we even start looking at any, anything else. But we can go next slide. Okay, so... At the landfill at Pu'uanahulu, you can see Pu'uanahulu Mauka, where the cowboys used to live and some still live over there. Um, you can see Haleakala Maui. These are all the viewpoints, the view planes. At the landfill where all the rubbish goes. Also, we had one meeting the other day. Our excrement is processed and the solid wastes also go here. So a lot of our stuff is deposited into our Aina Aloha here at Pu'uanahulu. And this is all photos, besides Kiawaiki, these, all these photos are taken from the landfill. So you can see all these places at the landfill. You can see Haleakala Maui. You can see the Kohala Mountains. You can see Mauna Kea. You can see Kiawaiki Bay if you go a little further down. And that's the landfill. Okay, So just to help us to contextualize what we're doing here or why, why we're doing it. Next. Next slide. Okay, next slide. Fast Outreach, um, we're very happy to partner with Nopoho and the Ellen with her um, wonderful program that has to do with reusable bottles. Yeah, um, so awesome. Um, the local war store, they have cold brew coffee and coconut water. And this was a project that um, she was able to really kickstart and get a, get a go in. Um, so we, we partner with um, local organizations like that. Uh, also, OK Farms is getting a round of applause for OK Farms. <laughs> We've been really, really working closely with them through the system design process, and, and Troy and Dave will both have been part. So super grateful. Those are some of our collaborations. Next slide. We've done some workshops in October. We did one Kui and, Ka Kui and Kani. Uh, the Kanui Ohana was here. We did Kui Kalo and was some, some uh, survey kind things. We did downtown bandstand. We did radio ads. We did all kinds of things. Um, but that was part of our work at UH Hilo 2 and HCC we did. Next. Um, so we had, um, this is some information and some photos. Next. Uh, also, just a huge mahalo to the community association. So um, it's so cool. Get Everybody's kupuna is going through this thing once a month. And I'm like, hey, where's your mopuna? What do you mean? Is there still here mopuna? So hopefully our young people can get involved in, in the existing community organizations that are around. So to the Lele EV Community Association, Sue and John, thank you folks for coming. Uh, yeah, bye bye Makako. To Panava Neighborhood Watch. Let's just keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Keokaha Panava Farmers Association, Keokaha Community Association. Um, also, we didn't get a chance yet, but Malama Kaina, Hanaka Aina, Kuskipi folks, and Pihonua Community Association. We hope to get a chance to to visit with them there. We're on the books to to visit with them soon. But so, yeah, very grateful for all of the partnerships. We can go next slide. 
Okay, so we have reuse lexicon. We can send this out to you folks who, who logged in earlier, but um, we can go next slide. This is just some, hey, what is that formatting? Somebody didn't change the font on these things. Last time I saw was this no was. But so you guys know Aloha in the Meds, the song. So Ika Aka and I did that song together, but he's the one that helped us to kind of coin some of these terms. So we're well equipped to really apply this in our immersion settings. We can go next slide. Okay, and this is how it works. Okay, so this is the system. This is so that's the context, and this is the program. Okay, what time is it? Eight o'clock. Okay, I gotta get a move in. I gotta get a move in. So how it works? So everybody, um, can somebody tell me one of the zero ways of Ayalin values? What? Hello, anybody who's listening or not? Um, Khadija in the back. Kanaka and 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 can we get um can I get a volunteer to do this running? Okay, yes, Tina, yes. Um we, we're gonna get you a ticket. Okay, Kanaka, somebody tell me what Kanaka means. Huh? Huh? Somebody in the back. No, not Khadija, no. Yeah. Person, person. Can we get this? What's your name? Monday. I love that. Can we get Monday also? Lucky draw. Okay, um, very good. So that's anybody have any questions so far? What kind of program are we here to talk about today? Reusable foodware, TC, please give yourself um one of those tickets. Yes, please, please, volunteer, yes. Okay, so we're here to talk about a reusable foodware system. I'm going to show you how it works. Well, I'm not going to show you because it doesn't. Anyway, next slide. Okay, I'm just going to tell you, okay. So everybody say, Ehuli, Ehuli Mako. Okay, very good. But that's not what the process, that's the song. So Ehuli Iko Keoho Iho is the first step. Then e kainoa iho keo, e paina ho i. Everybody say paina. Paina doesn't actually mean party. It's it's what the food that exists at the party. It's the 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 all the foods, the paina in the back, the, the spread. You know that's the paina. Um, ho i ho i kaho keo, ho ahui ia kaho keo lepo, ho loi ia, and ho i kaho keo. Okay, is that clear? Okay, next slide. Just kidding. We're gonna go into detail. Okay, so the first thing that you would do if this system can be real, hopefully it can be real because we're making a lot of rubbish. You know the plastic clamshells, it says compostable. It's not actually, it's compostable in a commercial facility, which we don't have over here. So they're just kind of scamming us and lying because that goes to Pu Anahulu. Where does it go? Pu Anahulu is not, no, okay, okay. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna walk into Ken's Pancake House. I wonder if they, I wonder if they're participating in the spot that, Huli ia, eh huli kaho. We we found it. We found it. They're participating. Awesome. Okay, we this this flyer whatever. Okay, next, next. Okay, e kai noa. Then we have to check it out. We have to check it out. Beep. Scan some kind of somehow. We have to check out the because we we not can just let them go because we know we're gonna let them flow and they're not gonna come back. You know. So we have to check them out somehow. Okay, next slide. And then we enjoy the. This is my favorite part. Okay. We're going to enjoy the food in it, whether that's at home or at One Kahakaha or wherever it is. We're going to enjoy the food and drink. Okay, next. And then we're going to bring it on back. Everybody say ho'i ho'i. Like ha'avina ho'i ho'i. Ha, that means homework. But ho'i ho'i. Every ho'i ho'i. That means bring it on back. Say bring it on back. Yes, and that's the next step. We're going to have to bring it on back. Okay. Um, you can see here there are bins, and, and there are actually tech-enabled bins that you can scan right there, and then it deposits the um, the dish, and so that's the next step. Next next slide. And then somebody goes to collect these um, dishes. So they, they go around to the bins, and then they collect the dishes. Yeah, next. Then the containers are transported and washed all together, not like how I wash dishes. <laughs> better, better, better than how I wash dishes. Okay. Yeah. Because mine still has a little bit, I don't know what is that on the side. But not that not that kind. It's a good dishwasher that we're going to have, okay, ideally. Um, the containers will be washed and sanitized with heat and um, and um, the kind of stuff that kills the bacteria because we don't want those, you know. So so that's the next. Holoi ia a pepehi ia kabu. So like all the, the germies, they're killed in that process. Um, but that's the next step. And then next. Then the containers are redistributed. So this is the idea. Um, this is the idea of the okay, next. 
Yes, that's the idea. So the feedback that we're asking you about today is about that process. Okay, so that's the context of the work, the context of the project. Does anybody have any questions so far? Okay, according to the agenda, I stay beyond time, but can I, what is your question? No, this is not happening, no. We want it to happen though. Oh, wait, anywhere else? Yes, it's happening elsewhere. So um, there are places in other countries that do this on a regular basis. It's kind of a smaller scale. Japan does this, Aotearoa they do, and they have stainless steel kind of things, but um, there are other places. I, I bring this up often, and this is the last thing before I hand it to Jen, but Hawaii, I don't know if you folks know, but we had electricity in the lighthouse before in the lighthouse. We had electricity at Iolani Palace before the White House had electricity. So we're very innovative people by nature. And I, I would like for us to be able to jump on this opportunity um, so that we can be ahead because there's a lot of cities that that really um, don't have the opportunity to get this going and we do. So I'm um, just mahalo for coming to this and, and it, it is happening. Yeah, it is happening elsewhere. So I'm gonna um I'm not even the boss over here. I just work here, and Jen Jen is the boss. So can you get a round of applause for Jennifer Navarro? Um, can you kind of lead us through the rest of the presentation. By boss, it means I do all the fun administrative things, <laughs> handle the money. But I let's give a round of applause to Kule and to Ted who were able to get this room full of people together. I really appreciate you guys' hard work in, in getting this thing organized. Um. It's it's a pleasure to see so many faces. I was like, I'm gonna be like ten people, you know, but they did a lot of hard work to get people here. So I really appreciate. It. So um leading into your question um about is this happening anywhere? Yes, but not at the scale we're trying to accomplish. So Perpetual is really our lead partner in this. They're on in the Zoom land. They they're dispersed across the US, actually across the world. Some, some people are in Paris, actually, for one lady. Um, they're working to create a model where we have this operating at scale. Right now, there's small businesses popping up doing this work, but it's like an option, right? Like you can go in, and if you care, maybe you can pay a little extra, and you can get a reusable container. But it's not happening where it's the default. This is how you get your food when you go to the store and you'd have to ask for the single use item. So what Perpetual is really trying to do is create some demonstration projects where we actually can see that this can function as a solution to eliminate all of this plastic, not only plastic, but all this single use foodware. You know, that there's packaging makes up about 20% of our waste stream nationwide. So it's, it's huge, it's a huge chunk. And a lot of foodware specifically really doesn't have a lot of solutions other than burying it, burning it, or you know composting, but a lot of places don't have the infrastructure like Hawaii to do that. So Perpetual is working here in Hilo. They're also working in Galveston, Texas, Ann Arbor, Michigan, and Savannah, Georgia to, to, to create this solution. Our partners in this is also County of Hawaii. They were kind enough to go after a grant opportunity that's really gonna allow us to implement this and not just talk about it. Um, zero waste, you know us. And then Sea Grant, Hawaii Sea Grant also um, went after another grant that's gonna fund part of this work um, in partnership with us. So you can go to the next slide. So we got money. <laughs> and um, I don't think we would be able to do this without this money. Um, so we have the, the Solid Waste Infrastructure Recycling Grant that's gonna be $1.5 million that'll allow us to establish a dishwashing facility, vehicles for transporting containers, uh, the return bins that are gonna make it convenient for everybody to return around town. We have also that pollution prevention grant that's gonna allow us to hire a person, Paul, who's starting next week, <laughs> and I think he's in the Zoomverse. Um, that will allow us to provide technical assistance to businesses also to five schools and five community organizations that have meal programs like Meals on Wheels. And then we hopefully might get a little extra money from the state level, um, what is it? Climate Pollution Reduction Grant. So we put it, we're in that application and we may get more additional funding for infrastructure. Next slide. So this has been a long, or it's a long process to get there. 
we started out um, just talking, like lots and lots of meetings with different community groups, businesses, whatever. We kind of did that mapping and community engagement. Right now we're in this design phase and that's why we're here today. So all throughout the beginning of this year, we had meetings <clears throat> that the public was invited to participate in. And um, so that that is our first draft of this system design that we're getting your feedback on. And then once we finish that, um, there's like, Kule didn't really touch on it, but this reverse logistics piece, right? Like where someone picks up the containers, takes them to the washing facility, and then returns them to businesses to be used again. That is gonna be done by a service operator. Perpetual, zero waste, the county, we are not gonna do that piece. So there will be a request for proposals that goes out for someone to actually do that, that part. And so that will be our next step. And then we'll establish a, a dishwashing facility and all that. Hopefully, we're hoping to launch this at the beginning of next year. That's the that's the optimistic. <laughs> and I hope we can. So um, you can go next slide. So I kind of already touched on this um, in terms of the system design process. We did those meetings at the beginning of the year. Right now, we're doing the first draft review process, or I'm hoping we'll get feedback from you guys today that we can incorporate because so far we haven't gotten much feedback. Um, but we hope to have this final draft by June. Yeah. So there's lots of different elements. Kule touched on them. Um, but you know, we need tracking systems in place for the containers, not for you guys. Yeah, we're not going to track you as individuals, but just we want to track the containers because. In order to have an system that's in more environmentally friendly and sustainable than single use, we got to get those containers back because we put more energy and resources into making them. So they got to come back and we got to keep them circulating into the system. So we got to track them <clears throat> with technology. What else? We also, I'll go into this more detail so you can go next slide. So the first piece, there's different elements I'm gonna walk through. I'll try not to go too quickly, or I'll try not to take too long as much as we can actually hear from you guys. But the first is the revenue model, how we pay for this system, yeah? And this system, or what we decided when we had these public meetings and input, and based on Perpetual's also their recommendation, is to have a pay per, pay per reuse fee. So for each container, a business would pay I don't know, 15 cents, 30 cents. We want to make it comparable to what they're paying now, not more expensive or not significantly more expensive. There's lots of other models, like some places, you know, the customer has to pay for it. We don't, like, we want to keep this equitable and fair and that everyone can participate. So, you know, pay per reuse is what we're planning for the revenue model for the system. Then you can go. <laughs> Next is um, where do we start, right? Like, are we gonna do cups and containers and everything all at once? That might be too much. So here, and we're gonna do containers first. And we did, Hannah, who, where's Hannah? She's here. <laughs> Hannah went out with a couple others and talked to what, 40 businesses altogether, something like that, and got some baseline data of like the, the amount of volume of containers that businesses are using. And we found they're using more containers than cups. And so we're gonna start with containers because volume is really important to keeping the cost low. The reason why this is not not working as well in places where you don't have the scale is because you don't have the volume of the container to make, make the system work. So we're gonna start with containers. You can go on next slide. The container type and materials. So, you know, here in Hawaii, we eat a lot of bentos. We eat a lot of plate lunch. So probably we'll start with some bento-like containers in a single compartment. Um, you know, like the clamshell kind. And then material types, um, we're, we're gonna prefer glass or stainless steel over plastic. We didn't see a ton of enthusiasm for um, for plastic, even like in the near term or even in, in the long term. So we're gonna, you know, plastic is plastic. It has its, <laughs> it's good and it's evil, but we're gonna probably tend towards using glass and, and stainless steel if can. Um, and I, I just want to, I think it maybe, I just want to touch on the fact that we did those workshops, which involved asking a lot of these kind of questions. And that's where a lot of these graphs are coming from. You can go next slide. For the technology piece, 
So this is like how you check the container out. It'll be a QR code that it will be scanned. And there's like really like a tap to reuse function that's really like simple and easy. If you're paying with a credit card, it automatically is gonna know that it's you that took the container. And if you don't bring it back, we're gonna charge you a fee. <laughs> so, but not everybody can pay, right? Um, by Or not everybody does pay by credit card, which our data here shows. Um, so in those cases, we can actually have it, you know, I think about it kind of like, you know, you go to KTA and like Foodland and all these places have like these loyalty programs, something similar to that where they can track you um, and the container and you'd actually like prepay a deposit. So you get like five that you can check out. If you don't return them, then, you know, they're not going to let you check out more unless you put more of a you, I guess get more deposit. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the consumer. I think we have a lot of people that are are struggling here in Hilo and really around the island. So we wanna make sure we have some a way for those people to participate as well. And then I, did I get everything on that slide? Oh no, I didn't, so you can go back. So there also the other thing is, let's say container is abandoned. If you find that container, you can bring it back in and get a 15% redemption fee. So to incentivize that others return other people's containers. And then, yep, you didn't go next. Is this next one? Okay, so it will be free for people to participate in the program. It's not gonna cost you anything unless you don't return the container. If you don't return the container after one week, then you'll be charged a fee. If you eventually bring it back, then the fund, the money would be refunded. Um, the only thing is we gave about a week time because that's was a generous amount of time. Some people live, in, I'm moving to a volcano, you know, like some people live outside of Hilo, might not, might not come back into Hilo that often. And so in that case, you could like extend the amount of time that before you bring it back, like, you know, I don't want to read like the lib, like I think about the library book, you check out a library book. I want to keep it longer. You can just extend the amount of time that you keep it. Oh, this was the token slide. I went ahead. Okay, we can go next slide. Okay, the collection bins. The collection piece is really important. We want to make sure it's convenient for people to get the containers back, that they're not having to make special trips. Like, I know we have a lot of challenges with our collection systems on the island. Like, we have the transfer stations. If you want to throw your rubbish, you can take your cardboard and your glass there. But if you want to take your high fives, you got to go somewhere else. And then, oh, you can go business services, take your number two plastic, and you're like driving around the island. So, you know, there's a lot of work to do, I think, with our collection systems. We want to try to make this best convenient as possible. So our plan is to have 75 to 100 bins at the time of launch. And then um, this will be a combo of those tech enabled and non-tech enabled. So the non ones are just, you know, you drop them in. It'll be a... <clears throat> It'll be, you can't grab it out, yeah? Like the library book or those FedEx boxes. Um, so you can't like take containers out of it again. And then the tech enable would actually like check the container back in at the time. And you maybe you get the app, download the app that you want to know what's going on. You'll get a little ping, it's like, do you return your container? Thank you, or something like that. Um, eventually we want to get to the point where we have 325 containers total or not containers, but bends around. Um, and we want to encourage all the participating businesses to have places to return the containers inside. You can go next. So we have this QR code. If you want to scan this, you can like play around a little bit more, but these are some of the suggested locations. These are all just like, you know, Hypo not hypothetical, but you know, we're not gonna, until we actually get to the point where we're gonna place the bins as well, we'll go on ground truth and really like finalize. But right now we're still taking input if you want to give input on where you'd like to see a bin located. Um, I forgot to mention before, but there'll also be like three, re or roughly three redemption sites. So this could be like Mr. K's or where you take your high fives, but you could actually like bring the containers in. <laughs> and I believe you would have, that's where you'd have to go if you found containers that weren't yours, you could get your 15%, 15 cents back for those. <laughs> you can go, everybody done scanning. <laughs> so we are gonna have to establish a new dishwashing hub. There's really not a lot, any dishwashing capacity here in Hilo, but 
that's great because we have all this grant funding. So um, we will establish a new hub today. We were just looking at um, a place on 17 Buck Olive Street where Goodwill is setting up. So if you know awesome commercial space for this, let us know, we're, we're looking. <laughs> you can go next. And then for the transport of the reusable items, so we wanna just make sure it's an optimized route that it's very efficient in terms of picking things up and we'll use a combination of either cargo bikes, vans, um, for, for picking up the containers and returning them. <clears throat> for labor, um, we wanna make sure that we're creating like really awesome green jobs um, that are well, well paid, you know, pay a living wage and that also have health benefits. There's also a lot of opportunities for workforce development and possibility to work with, you know, going home with justice involved or with, um... <laughs> yeah. So um, I think another thing that's been really important to me and also Ellen, I know, <laughs> we would love to see like a local business come on and take over this service operator piece as opposed to having an outside business come in and do that piece. So if you know any entrepreneurs or you aren't one yourself, um, you know, let us know that you're interested and we'll make sure you hear about the RFP. You can go next. Surge events, this is like when there's a lot of people in town. So Mary Monarch, there's the, what's the, the, the Kilo, the World Sprint. It's the first time we're hosting that. It's gonna be a lot of people here in like a week. <clears throat> Our cruise ship days used to be like every Tuesday, but now I don't even know anymore. There's like a lot of cruise ships. I don't know where they're coming from. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, so we want to make sure we have enough containers on stock or, you know, in circulation to handle those surge events. The next, the last one is about governance. Um, this is like, there's, there's going to be the service operator that's on the next slide. They're going to do the actual work. Yeah. Right now, the county's role is to administrate this grant of what their long-term role in this work you know, that's still kind of to be determined. And then you can go on the next slide. And then we're gonna need like an entity that kind of can oversee the management of the system. Because imagine, you know, we're just starting out a Hilo, but let's say Kona side, another company comes and wants to do this service operating piece. How do we make sure that there's an interoperable system across different entity or different businesses? And we wanna make sure like the marketing is consistent, right? The, the symbol that tells you something that is reusable is the same and the containers look the same. So we kind of need an entity that can oversee that, that piece of this work. And there's a lot of things listed on this slide, but in the interest of hearing more from you guys, I think this is our last, you can go next. Um, you're here, I'm hoping we can just get your feedback right now. But if you go home tonight and you're like, oh, I wish I would have said this thing, you can go to our website and fill out a form or you can call Kuule or email us or, you know, track us down, however, and give us that feedback. And then I think that's it. Yeah, now we're here. I'll let Kuule take back over. <laughs> Thank you. As, you know, we flew all the way today. <laughs> because that is good. That was good. Huh? That was all. Uh, let's get a round of applause for Jen. Okay, so um, can we go? Can we take it a couple of slides back, like back to the um, yeah, some more, 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 some more. Okay, okay, um. Okay, so I the, the point of today was to allow us to um, be able to provide feedback on some of the things that Jen just pre presented. Um, but I, I think it's really important for us to have some, um, to take some manao down on the general, the general presentation. Um, a lot of people, <laughs> when they, for example, okay, so for example, some people, in the beginning, we did this uh, Ho'olu Aina gathering, and some of the people were saying that it doesn't make sense to do a reusable food or system in Hilo. That doesn't make sense because we're going to be bringing in, especially if the material is plastic, we're going to be bringing in all of those plastic containers to Hawaii that's going to end up in the landfill anyway when they get chipped or broken. And through that initial conversation, 
the manao that came out was okay, but al already there's plenty, plenty plastic. And if we could use one piece of plastic 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, that's that much less plastic that's in the landfill. So um, can, can we have, for the tickets, can we have somebody share your manao about the general system? Tina, 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 the runner. Tina, the runner. Did anybody, does anybody have any questions about this, this thing that we're presenting today? Yes. Don't forget BYO. We can never forget BYO. Um, it would be really awesome if we could just bring our own, like bring our own container when we go, because then we don't need all of this. But the, the reality is that there's, it's kind of illegal. Um, if somebody actually puts their food inside of your thing, they can be kind of fined um, from the health department. It's, it's kind of against the code of the, whatever kind of code they have, it's against it. So um, <laughs> it, it's actually taking a lot of work to be able to make it so that we can do the bring your own system. There's some policy changes that need to happen. Um, some training that needs to happen for standard procedures and, and all of those kinds of things. So um, bring your own is kind of, it seems a little further, further out. And this, the, the funding that we have is for this system. And so, but we still, we still hope to eventually be able to work with folks so that we can do the bring your own, um, not instead also, you know, but that's in the future. Yeah. Um, can, can we get Ellen a ticket? Because that was a good question. Okay. Any other question? Yes. You know what? We have a we have a cordless mic. My runner, my runner. Okay, very good. That's a good question. Uh, for those of you who didn't hear the question, for Zoom especially, um, for the Zoom folks, the question was, have we figured out that the resources it takes to wash all of the dishes and also transport the dishes, because it's gas, yeah, to transport from the recycle, I mean, from the bin that we deposited into to the washing facility and, and et cetera. Have we figured out that it takes less resources to do that than it does to do the disposables? That's the question. Do you have an answer? Oh, wonderful. Uh, yes, the answer is yes. It actually saves a lot. Um, you know, there's these fun things called life cycle assessments, <laughs> but there's been quite a bit of research and it is shown, you know, I mean, but the critical piece is like, we gotta get the containers back, right? And we gotta use them enough times and circulate them enough times. And if we do that, then yes, it's better for the environment. Because you think our single use system is really extractive. You think about all you know, the, the extraction of resources to make a single use container, then they gotta ship it over to our island. And then we use it one time and then we gotta throw it in the garbage or you know, throw it in the land. So that's really, it's a lot of use of resources. And what we wanna do is get to the point where when we don't need these containers, or when you know the, it's broken or cracked or dented and we can't use it anymore, we don't throw it in the landfill, right? A lot of companies, they're taking the containers back and recycling them. So they might not be recycled back into containers, like for stainless steel, I'm not sure. But you know, there's everything has an impact, you know? Um, best thing we could do is like try and make things here on the island and not throw them in the landfill at the end. So, but the answer, short answer is yes. Thank you. That was a good question. Did you get a ticket? Wow. Oh, this thing is so loud. I don't, because you talk so soft. Ah, okay. oh, what happened? What happened? You have more questions and there's more tickets. Yeah.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally, totally, I love that idea, Um, mostly because, okay, well, first of all, I was supposed to be writing this down, but I still feel, I don't want to if I be flaw, can somebody, okay, can you, Autumn, 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 can you hear what's going on, Autumn? And she's like, what? She's sleeping. It's two o'clock in the morning. I'm, I'm um, taking notes. Okay, hopefully, I think it's being recorded. The Zoom, the Zoom is being recorded, yeah. Repeat the question. Okay, the question has to do with um how a lot of the conversations hold the individual users responsible for a lot of the work that has yet to be done. And at the LM, I see your hand up back there. I see it, I see it. Um, we're gonna get there. Uh, I just wanted to say that, so the question is, how can we hold more institutions responsible for the reduction of waste? How can we hold businesses and commercial entities and schools and tourism, uh, industries accountable to also making less waste. And so I, I'm very excited to say that all of the, so I know that Kyoka High School, they have disposable um, dishes that they use every day, every single day. That's because my pigs is choking on the ketchup packets and the forks and everything. Because, because we pick up the slop from over here. <laughs> and so actually there's a very real, real visceral um, response to, to to the rubbish it's not only like someday the landfill will no today the pigs is choking you know so there's a benefit um to actually up, applying the that's an option that i would like to see that and that's very that's a very viable option um for the schools to adopt re these same reusable so well not right now because the system doesn't exist yeah but if the system exists it's easy for the schools just to be like okay we'll participate and instead of spending x amount of dollars on paper plates you can spend x amount of dollars on reusables and you can pick or you can pick up our pick up our stuff along the route when you go pick up the one down Bayf um um i don't know um Lokoaka or wherever the other places are so that's that's something that we really hope to to put it in place um, also, we hope to have bins at the pier, at the airport, um, and also for some people who are going to Kona, we hope to have a system in place where we have some remote um, places to return those kinds of things um, for the individuals. But again, it's important for us to start this kind of system because if it doesn't exist at all, um, there's no way that that industries will be able to be like, okay, yeah, we'll do it. This random thing that doesn't exist. <laughs> but if it's existing and people are using it and it's functioning and it's functional and all they have to do is sign some papers and change the name on the check to the paper disposable kind of people to whoever the service providers are, it's an easy switch. So, and there's money to help schools to adopt these systems. That's that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So we have funding for five schools in Hilo to um, receive technical assistance. And I just spent the last two weeks writing a grant <laughs> for Kule to do education in schools and also to get try to get all the schools in East Hawaii to participate in the system. Because what we've learned from talking to the you know the people that handle the operations. All the school, you know, all the schools used to do reuse, I don't know, in the 60s or before. 
but they changed their facilities that it will be a lot of work to set it up to have a dishwasher and to do it in inside the facility. Um, but because we have this dishwashing hub, they can they can participate. It's just a matter of convincing. And, you know, we're dealing with Department of Education state level. So it's like, I think, you know, it's just another, it just takes time. Just <laughs> what is it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I want to, TC is here, but we want to do like waste audits in all the schools and like see how all kinds of waste can be, um, you know, reduced in schools. And then you you touched on tourism, which, you know, I worry about the tourists <laughs> taking their reusable thing onto the cruise ship. Um, so I, I think it, it really comes down to how well can we educate the people working so that they can tell, you know, educate the customers on how to, I mean, that's what I just read a report like a couple of weeks ago, but that's really critical signage, making sure that it's communicated that we have this thing going on here, like really well working with the tourism authority, whatever their Hawaii tourism authority, like making sure there's a good education system for tourists coming in to understand that we have this system in place and please don't take your cup or your container back on the cruise ship or wherever. Yeah, yeah we want suggestions. <laughs> uh, Well, you know what? Oh. Check one, two. Um, my my suggestion. Hi, everybody. I'm Alex. Um, my suggestion, it, because the question is how to get people to do the thing, and the solution is to educate people, right? But I think that a, a an easier way <laughs> to get people to do things is to gamify the thing so like um every disposable every unit that you put your used piece of thing in like should be like a striking thing that looks like a fun time like is a art is an art mouth that you like put your container in and when it when you put it in it, it like makes yummy noises you know or like or like it looks like a it looks like a like a canyon or something and you toss your thing in and it goes or something there's like there's like studies that have proven um in i don't know probably japan that like um implementing the fun principle uh increases people's um participation in like mundane things like like returning a thing and um <clears throat> make like and also psychologically all of us are addicted to our phones which are gamifying our lives constantly so i think instead of thinking about or my suggestion is just um instead of putting it up to chance of like maybe people will want to be educated is implementing like a mass psychology gamification system that will actually just m compel people to want to do it because it's enjoyable to participate. And also they'll feel good because they'll get those tokens of, um, as well as it being fun, they're also doing something good for the world. I, I think that it would be so fun to get all the artists in Hilo together to like decorate the collection bins. Do we have any art uh, uh, art uh, artists in the audience? Yeah, that'd be fun. Okay, I'll show. <laughs> Just going off of that, I feel like maybe developing some kind of point system. I know that you get a refund through returning your container but creating some sort of system that yeah further incentivizes kind of the game of doing good and participating and maybe that you know you get a certain amount of points kind of like you go to a coffee bar and you get a certain amount of points or whatever and that could be also for 
the places that are participating, maybe they um, opt in to that as well. Oh, so I I like the um, art idea and everything, right? But how are we gonna get people to actually get give the stuff back, right? That's the thing that is kind of lingering, is how we're gonna actually get them to return it. Because in all reality, Hawaii is, you know, it's, it's expensive here, right? This is like the highest cost of living. And so when most middle-class people can go to some place and they're gonna be given this stainless steel dish and in my head is thinking, thank you, right? I, I, you know, one less dish I gotta buy, right? So how are we gonna get them to be accountable in returning the item? Yeah, I love that question. So some of the things that we've done um, or, or some of the option that we've been looking at is like a, a no um, or a non, return fee. So like um, whether we have an option for people to put cash on a card or the option for people to just use their debit card, you won't get charged anything to use the reusable. It's, it's free to use. But if you don't return it, you'll be charged for the cost of the reusable. <laughs> she said, oh, period. We'll return in that today. <laughs> she said, That's going back to Marvel. Okay. <laughs> We need a return bin on my street outside my house. Okay. Yeah. So that's the idea. We've been putting together some of those kind of decisions to make sure that folks are incentivized to return the to return the dish. Yeah. Okay, but somebody can, Tina, the tickets, Tina. Just give her the role, DC. Just give her the role. So <laughs> um the re so we were talking about like a reminder thing right to remind you that oh you get you need to return this tomorrow or you need to return you have one hour to get this back or you're going to be charged this much money right like because i was telling them how in vegas there's this uh there's a lot of kiosk for charging ports right and they charge you so much for you get like oh if you're gonna use it for one hour it's this much two hours is this much and if you don't return it within the 24 hours you get charged this much but there's also um a reminder thing yeah, yeah. yeah so there'll be an option to like download an app that can ping you and i imagine you could get text messages too Oh, you just return, you know, like every time you return, you got, you know, we got your container or it's, it's due in three days. Do you want to extend? So there'll, there'll be that option to make, to remind customers to, to get things back. One, two, three more questions. Uh, there's one, two, three more questions. Okay. Can I ask, answer her question real quick? She asked if, if what was it? <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a credit card, that's when I, maybe didn't well explain, but there'll be like an option to kind of like, I think of it as kind of like a member, like a, it'll be like a card, right? And you can maybe have five containers lo loaded to your card. I'm thinking of like maybe the people that, you know, are unhoused or whatever, but it doesn't have to be. A lot of people just like pay with cash, yeah? Um, but yeah, there'll be a, an option to not pay with credit card and, and be trapped. <laughs> All right, other questions? This is similar to some of the comments that have already been made, but um, to the point of the revenue model being focused on business, I'd like to see ways that individuals can be part of that. So um, maybe the names of all the businesses um, or the restaurants, and then people can say, I want my restaurant, my favorite restaurant to participate or um, set incentives for a coffee shop to if you come if you bring back 
the coffee cup to me, you get a discount on that. Um, so just keep thinking about because the those of uh, um, the individuals who are very motivated could influence the business choices. Yeah, and I think we don't have the plan at launch to do something like that necessarily, but that's it. This is not the first feedback we've had of that idea. And so it's definitely planned. I just don't not sure check with perpetual, but I'm not sure that it'll be like day one. We'll have the loyalty thing set up, but eventually definitely. Ellie. Okay. Um, the local board store is using the loyalty program with their drinks. They offer a 50 cent store credit when you bring the bottle back. So that's an example, a good example. Oh, get another ticket. Um, but back to the tourist um, issue, that's a huge number. And we're talking, I mean, that's a lot of people here for you know even one day to five days a week. Um, so I was talking with somebody back there, Sasa, Sasa. and um, we um, are actually looking at the possibility of getting the tourism companies, the tourist companies, Roberts Hawaii involved and, you know, Kapoho kind and later, later, later. But I'm sitting next to a woman who made a major change with Waiuli, we count. When the cruise ships started coming back after the pandemic, Sue and her neighbors got down there at the beaches and were counting all the trash they were seeing and all the numbers of people that were coming on tour buses and our local beaches just could not handle it. So there is a way to work with the tour company. She, um, you know, had good, good and bad um, times, I guess, discussing things with the tour drivers, but they made a big difference once you get the tour bus drivers involved. So what I'd like to see is our tour companies um, that are headquartered out of Hilo, we can have some of the collection bins there. And then um, I remember, and I, I've been trying to find out where this source is, but I remember someone, we were discussing this in Iceland or Greenland, the tour companies, uh, the tour bus driver will hand out X amount of reusable foodware, you know, to the people as they're getting on the bus. And they use that container that day and then turn it back in right to the bus driver. So why can't we do that? We can do that. I'm, I'm so sorry because I said, I see your hand and then I ignored your hand because I forgot. I'm so sorry. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> so I'm just wondering what the potential is to do like a ban, like we did the no plastic ban to just make it mandatory for everybody to participate. I know that it might come as a cost to businesses, but can some of that grant money be used to offset the costs for, for businesses? And then my last question is, I saw a large grant from the county. Well, not large, but okay size from the county. What is their appetite? And maybe Jen, you can respond to this. Uh, what is the appetite for the county to run the system and the service similar to like how they do trans waste you know transfer stations Sick question for craig i think <laughs> yeah i mean i i just think realistically finding the people or the organization to run that system is going to be a massive challenge a massive challenge and so how like we almost have to like the government has to like internalize that and institutionalize that in order to make that to make a system that is going to have impact. Well, I'll start with your first question, which is, can we can we require it? I would say yes, but we have to have infrastructure countywide. Like, we cannot pass an ordinance just for Hilo. I don't think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so yeah, I think I would like I would like to see that down the road, but I think we need to. You know, one thing I didn't touch on is that because there are no like actual demonstration projects of this happening, you know, anywhere really, um, there's not a real, it's hard to get investment. Like I'm a business and I want investment for the infrastructure to start up. Um, that's a difficult thing right now. So like Hilo actually is leading on this nationwide 
um, in terms of having this much public investment and getting a reuse system going. So we kind of are in the spotlight. And um, so it's a real opportunity, I think, to to create opportunities for investment down the road. But I'll let Jen respond. Yeah, I'll just, I think I'll kind of just second what Jen said. I think there is a definite possibility for doing a ban, but I think we need to have something in place that shows it can work and get, you know, get it going a little bit first. Because right now with, with nothing in place, it's very hard to talk about anything like that. But I think if we get something going, get it in place, then there definitely is a opportunity for a ban. Um, Craig, do you want to answer the other one? I think it'll be easier if the, um, like a business takes over and a county oversees it. Because if the county does it, then we have to hire more people. We get the unions involved and all the red tape that goes along with it. I think coming from the outside, similar to like what we're doing with the um, the high five program. So we get the monies from the state, the um, high five monies from the state, and then we contract out to the um, redemption centers. So it's not the county workers actually doing, because if not, we'll have more and more county workers. my issues with unions but but we want everybody to have a secure job and i think the county is better equipped to do that than some private business which very likely will not be a private business from hawaii island or even from the state and so if we want to have create job opportunities for hawaii county people that would from the county most likely or the state right it doesn't just have to be for the county but i would i don't want to like dismiss that idea altogether is r d doing any kind of support or research around this i mean i know that they've invested a lot of like energy and time into the hydrogen sewage waste thing so are they also interested in pursuing research on this kind of stuff if it's with a business then it's um if it's with the county where uh less flexible to do things and then like i said the red tape and it takes a long time to do stuff to purchase stuff to yeah it's quicker with um if we just contract it out and one of the other components of this process that we didn't go into for the details is that there's going to be a uh, request for proposal process that is going to be put out after the end of basically the system design uh, documentation is finalized. And that particular process is going to be put out through the county to offer the opportunity to businesses or entrepreneurs, it doesn't have to be a previously established business, just an, an entity that wants to take on these various components that we'll put out in the RFP. So number one, the language of the RFP is going to be not only clear about what's being asked, but it's going to have selection and scoring criteria for how the provider would be selected. And the other component of that is um, it's going to allow uh, all of the entities involved, not just Zero Waste Hawaii Island, but the county and any of the other partners to weigh in on selecting who that would be at the end. And um, having come from a state entity background um, before I retired, I can tell you that sometimes you have RFPs that fail because no one meets the criteria well enough or scores well enough within that process. And I'm not gonna presuppose that there's gonna be a specific reason because the RFP hasn't been created yet, but there will be a process by where we'll know whether it's an actual viable entity that can pull this off. Um, so there's gonna be multiple ways that things can be put into an RFP to clarify 
um, how it's going to be run, the parameters that they're going to be expected to be uh, held to, but then also whether it's going to be successful. So addressing your question on whether anybody's going to be able to successfully do that within the Hilo area or even on the island, um, that that's going to be evident from how the RFP gets turned back in by whatever entities. So I'm not going to say it's a perfect process, but those kinds of processes allow you to, um, I don't want to say just weed out, but it allows you to specify the criteria well enough so that you're not going to get somebody that um, isn't going to be suitable for a variety of reasons. Hopefully that helps to answer your question. It has to be profitable. And when you look at the cost of running a business in Hawaii, the facilities are going to be critical. The cost of facilities, the cost of Aina, that's why it's so hard for farmers to survive. It is so high that how would a business come in and be profitable when you have to cover the cost of facilities? And so unless the county is going to provide that alongside the contract that they're giving, like we're going to provide you with this land, we're going to put up a warehouse for you, but we got to consider those things in the RFP. I mean, that's going to, and if you have to build the facility, we're talking years, the interest in this might wane dramatically in the time it takes to secure facilities in Hawaii County. You can take that up with the planning department. I, I definitely hear what you're saying and I think it's true, right? Like we just went to see a property today and I learned that like Goodwill brought this property and then like everybody that was a tenant there got kicked out and they got to find another place and the guy we talked to, um, he bought another property, you know, to move to. We're actually where Goodwill is host now. So it, there's, there's the economic realities that exist and yes, it does have to be economically viable, but Perpetual are experts, you know, they've done the math or Galveston, which is not here, but, um, you know, it, the economics are possible. And if they're not, I think that's when the county could come in and help a business to, you know, contract them with monies to make it work. But Perpetual is confident that it will. So, and they're the experts. Go ahead. Um, I think that's really, it's very it's koi koi loa, just the ability to recognize that the, the county is probably better equipped to identify and support this program over a, a small business, you know, or even an individual or a family. So that's on top of this little pepper right here. And it's going into the notes. Mm -hmm. Um I think part of our, so we're kind of like heading into the, the latter part of the evening and I think we're getting ready to do this lucky draw thing. Um, I think Laura had some manao. Um, but I wanted to mahalo you folks for showing up and actually considering this. Cause I think if there was not these hard questions, it would be you, either nobody's really thinking that too hard about it or <laughs> or it's just like, okay, whatever. I just for real came for the be flow. So thank you for actually, you know, um, just for your mana'o um, in, in this space. that That's you, yeah, or no? That's because I don't think we met. I'm cool, eh? <laughs> but, um, but okay, a couple of things. So we, we've we done a lot of this, this back and forth kind of um, community kind of things with other, other people. Um, in very intensive spaces, and we came up with this plan. So what Jen was was um, presenting is part of the plan. I, I want to before I before I kind of run through this real quick to make sure that we have specific manao. Um, I wanted to just thank the um, Nalimu Ohana for being here. Um, there's you folks, yeah, Nalimu. For real, was, I don't know I can. I was like, you guys, you can come to my thing or um the kind because I don't know if anybody's gonna come. So can you come? So they came. Um. And so just really grateful for you folks. And Auntie and Uncle, do you folks have any thoughts, any manao that you wanted to share about the system? Any questions, anything like that? How, how are you folks feeling? I know it's a big project and it's not a very simple thing that we can do overnight. Um, but there is a lot of people out there 
that we need to console with to let them know what you are trying to do, you know, in realms of recycling um, or reusable. But a lot of a lot of the families do takeouts now. You know, I see when we go to the restaurant, we see a lot of people taking out food. So containers are going out. You know, and one, I was just sitting here and I said, you know, residents should be um, notified about this too, because I'm quite sure we have a lot of containers. I do, I know. A lot of containers at home that I know I can reuse them for myself, but if, it, if there's out there to be returned back to the businesses, you know, then we all should know about it. And it, this is something that we should look into, you know, but like I said, it's not an easy project. You know, we need people, we need volunteers, we need ears and eyes and voices to get this thing through. And um, we should just support it and try to work something out within the Aina or the, the, the island people. So um, I'm blessed to be here and I, I, I will notify my family because we, with the, this side family and my side family, I think we make like a thousand people. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of ohana that that we have, and and I, and I you know it, it's important to let them know that it's clearing up our eye now with this rubbish, you know. And I think all of them will have a lot to say about it. So thank you, thank you, Aunty. Mahalo piha, mahalo piha. Okay, we have we have Laura, but I think my tutu, because we're looking at the kupuntis. We have some, oh, are you on behalf of a kupunti? Okay, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for your guys' presentation. This is, um, in a lot of ways, merges with a lot of the work that we're doing in the State Senate office, but I wanted to kind of bring up extended producer responsibility as a complete tie-in with the this program and all of the, the ideas. And, it really addresses the things that Sasa was saying and the limitations and duty of governing in order to step in in this position. And it is what I mean by extended producer responsibility. Um, it's uh, something that we put through when, when I was in the state legislature and it's an ongoing conversation at the legislature, which basically takes it away from the individual responsibility, which is what Sasa was addressing and puts it in the hands of the business model that is producing the waste. So if they are extracting and they're doing, um, especially there's a lot of environmental injustice where containers and plastic is processed. Of course, there's a lot of extraction where the fossil fuels are being extracted and there's wars um, in the entire planet around fossil fuel production, uh, extraction, et cetera. So, Basically, it puts it the responsibility back on the producers of this kind of um, extractive model. And so I think there is a really important step that government takes on having the businesses that produce the waste. And I'm not talking about the small businesses or businesses that purchase it. I'm talking about the, the producers of even fast moving consumer goods or the folks that are producing the clamshells, for example, to begin with. They don't live here, it's off island. It, most of it is probably at some point goes through Cancer Alley. Uh, you can look up Cancer Alley and learn a lot about that. Um, it's mostly people of color and it's very low income. Um, and so anyways, if we're looking at passing laws in our state that say um, these producers need to pay into a fund that funds reuse programs, especially to start up the infrastructure. I think that in some ways will address, for example, the the, the business model, the, the businesses that um, would be putting in the RFP, for example, it would it would um, help them set up in that way, right? Because ultimately if we're reusing, there there is no profit margin. Does that make any sense? But anyway, I think it's very much tied in with extended producer responsibility um, on a state level and then coordination and collaboration with county government as well. Mahalo. Mahalo piha. Mahalo piha for that, Mahalo. Kako piha, 100%. Um, 
Okay. My to do. To do, did you have someone now for us? I heard, I saw your hand up. Yes. Oh wait. This auntie and then my to do there. I wanted to bring up some this like way back in the past. So um my mom, I basically our whole family. There was Hilo quality cleaners here on this island. We took care of all of the hotels, island wide, restaurants, businesses, on all of the towels and napkins, even diaper service that we took care of. Even to your automotive, your mechanic guy for his shop, his uniforms, and all of that. Now we did all of that for the whole big island here, which to me, it did save a lot of people the time, the money, the cleaning with having that service available. So why can't we then do the same thing with this? If you had that one thing, that could be Perfect timing. <laughs> But that is what I wanted to bring up about because if we could do it back then, we could still do it today. But yes, we do need a company that would be willing to do this. I mean, taking care of all the big hotels, the volcano, the kilo, all the way around the island, we did. So I will look at the county <laughs> and see if there is something or the state. Where do we go? To get this done because we do need it. Our rubbish is cutting up in Hulu. I don't want all the rubbish in my backyard anymore in Kilpaha. It's reaching us already. Mahalo. Mahalo Pina. And I think Mahalo Palai would agree that that was a good Mahalo that you had. For real, I don't know what was that. Um, to do. I think yeah. So is that um is that seven fifty seven? I just so, wanted the ticket, that's why now. Okay, yeah, I, I know, because um, Tina, Tina, we, no, um, have you been given the tickets? Thank yeah. you. Okay, just have to make sure, because that's I'm the ticket, really ticket. I'm interested in taking this information back to uh, my mother's society and the father's society and the Upeel society that we feed the membership and um, that is something we, if we could have a station where we gather um, would be wonderful. My question is, a million dollars doesn't sound a lot to me. So what happens or is there something in place after that grant is used up? Uh, how then what are are we just left with okay I'll pal, or how does it continue? That's a good question. Um, and thank you, because if you're interested in having me have a presentation for our mothers and fathers, you let me know. That's our church that we go to. <laughs> um, but so the way that the program is meant to to function is that it's it starts it starts in a way. It, the more people that use the system more often, that's how the profit, that's how we make a profit. And that's how we, um, we or the service provider, whoever it is that's that's doing the work, the more people that successfully return and reuse the, the system, the more profitable the system will be and the more successful the system will be. And I think um, when it comes to the initial monies, that $1.2 million, that's for infrastructure. So that's given to pay for the the um the return bins, for the, the transportation trucks to transport the different things, the dishwasher itself. So so this this opportunity would really be for uh, if not the county, you know, if, if we're not looking at the very the idea of having the county spearhead these things at this time, then the it would be the business owner. Um, who would work together with these funds through the RFP process to, to, it's kind of like for somebody who already does this kind of work, they would then be able, ideally be able to have now access to this, um, to this dishwasher, to these transport vehicles, to this. It would be a benefit that they could they could ideally, um, use. Do Do you have some thoughts on that, Jen? You know, so return on investment, right? Like that's the startup cost piece. That's a lot 
for a business to start something. So we, like she just said, we got that covered, right? A lot of the infrastructure costs to start up are there, but the system will be paid for by the revenue model slide is right here, right? The, each business is gonna pay a fee for each use of a container. And that will go towards paying the, labor, the workers that pick up the containers and wash them for all the costs. But we've applied for other funding to really get this started. So hopefully that comes through, but that would give us money to lease the facility for five years, um, hire on a person to work in the county to figure out how do we extend this program to all of East Hawaii, maybe eventually the whole county. So we've got some grant funding to start up, but the idea is that this is a business that can make money and survive on its own. And if it doesn't, that's when we look at Craig guys and be like, okay, or our county council people really, right? They're the ones with the purse strings and be like, okay guys, you know, it takes a lot of money to site a new landfill. So can we kick some money in to make a system, have a system in place where we don't create so much waste? So, you know, we'll see if we need to, to go to that point um, with the county. But for now, let's hope, you know, I trust in perpetual. I will not say I'm the expert. <laughs> I've run all the numbers, but I've seen the numbers they did for Galveston and they do the per unit cost, you know, and how much revenue that generates for the volume of containers. And then how much does it cost to pay 15 people and to keep the lights on and all that. And the math worked out for Galveston, but Galveston is not Hawaii and Hawaii is way more expensive. So we'll see. Okay, pull out your tickets, pull out your tickets. And do you have one more now? Yes. Already. Do you know the percentage of the recycles that we do already in our cans? What percentage is making enough money? Because not everybody is going to return these things. So there is going to be waste. What percentage do you need to keep this viable? because it took a long time for the recyclables now. And even now we don't have 100% coming back in our recyclables and we've had our recyclable program going for a long time. So this is kind of like a recyclable thing. Have you decided um, or have you looked into the county's um, amount of return on what we do return in, in those that, that you'll have enough to keep this viable, even with some waste that's going to be there. Yes, so Craig moved over from the high five department, so he is our high five expert. But I will say, what is it, like in the 60s is our return rate 67? High 60s is, but it's a little different, right? High five is like, we actually all pay that five cents when we get our can of soda or whatever. We pay it as consumers. And then we get that money back when we bring the container back. People in our community, people in our community are not 100% the people here that are interested in this. There's going to be a percentage in our community that will not do anything, they don't care. So we need to know what percentage of our community is involved in something like this because there's going to be waste. This yeah. is not gonna be a 100%. So I was gonna say like, so that's a deposit system. This system is different in that you don't get a deposit back, but we're gonna charge you if you don't bring the container back, right? Like you're gonna pay for that container. You own it now, you just paid $15 for it. <laughs> so that's a pretty strong incentive to bring something back. I wanna pay $15 for that container. And I think a lot of people um, feel the same way. So it's a little bit different in terms of I guess the behavior shift for a deposit system with deposits, people, go ahead, sir. <laughs> Hello, my name is Sam Kalua. I was the Hilo East Hawaii District Solid Waste Supervisor. I worked at Solid Waste between 1982 and 2010. And the most feasible and expensive way for us is taxpayers is honestly to bury the trash. Because local people consider rubbish, rubbish, right? So if we are such sorting out, I mean, really technically sorting out, this, pro this program will work depending on participation. Like Craig folks, like high fives and 
I've seen trailers come up with more plastic than anything else because people just, and there is no enforcement. There's no penalty for people that, that litter. We have an abandoned vehicle program that's been going on for, for years. We still see them on the side of the road. So it's about taking ownership of our of our property. And I feel sorry for my guy that's still working with uh, solid waste because what worked for me 20 years ago doesn't work anymore because the temperament of the people change. A lot of them don't hold responsibility for the INA. So for now, and I know that landfilling, as, as much as you don't want to hear it, it is the most, for us right now, it's the most practical, safest way to do The landfill is lying, and we cannot have a landfill in Hilo because too much rain, right? And when that leachate comes out, it's waste water, you got to treat them. And at one point before I left Hilo, we actually, they told us we actually, Hilo is going to keep on operating. We need to have a wastewater plant here. A small one, just to clean the water shop. But um, I love this program, but it's based on participation. So good, right? Yeah. You get people right there. I, I, I've seen the, the high five guys, you know, they get frustrated because the, the bin is right there. It's thrown, it's thrown in the trash. And there, and there is no enforcement, but thank you for letting me share. No, thank you, Uncle Uncle Sam, interviewee Kalua. <laughs> we had interviewed Uncle Sam um, earlier in the year. Um, I want to say that, Auntie, what is your name, Auntie, that you had shared and asked the question about um, about the... Auntie, what is your name? Sylvia Belcher. Auntie Sylvia. Can I call you Auntie? Yes. Okay, because some people are like, I'm not your Auntie. I'm like, well, I'm not going to call you Sylvia. <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you for your manao because it's really important. And this is, I was so against this in the beginning. I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> because I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't really have a lot of the information that I, that I realized um, when it comes to the specifics of the program. And even now I feel like it's, it's a long shot. It's, it's going to take a lot of work because Auntie Sylvia and Uncle Sam both are talking about behavior, the collective behavior of our community. And that's why when you kind of zoom out, not, not over here, in a previous slide, when you zoom out of the other activities we're engaged in, it's Kanaka, Aina, Akua, Kayaulu, Ohana, Aupuni. So like all of those values need to be need to be addressed. So when we're looking at the plastic ban, ba plastic bag ban, in the beginning, people were like, what the hell? Nobody, everybody, what are we gonna put our stuff in? Nobody can remember to 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 bring their plastic, their bags with them. Like there was a lot, it was unfathomable, you know, absolutely unfathomable. And now we're doing it and it's a successful program. We have to have, we have to start someplace. And so um, I, I, Uncle Sam is talking about landfill and that's the best because right now we're making a lot of rubbish, each one of, maybe not everybody here, probably we reusing our butter containers until the thing is all bust up over here. But a lot of people buy a lot of things and make a lot of rubbish. So Collectively, we hope to start in the schools. Um, one of the interviews that we we conducted was with this auntie who works really closely with students, and this is just to wrap up. But she said that the keiki and their interest in these kinds of behaviors and their commitment to be like, "Mom, you cannot do that," you know, <laughs> you know, like how they do. Um, that they're the ones that really initiate the biggest change because they're so wise and so small, but so wise. And then. We, we interviewed one brother on the um, street that sells paintings on the corner of the road. His, he goes by Dragonfly. But he's, he was saying, like, the children have a way of making us look like fools <laughs> because of the amount of things that we that we waste. Common sense, a lot of this stuff, about, about reuse and, and being mindful of our opala. So the general concept is not just reusable foodware program. It's upping the morale of the community so that it's effective. Like that's something that we really, really need to, um, we, Mako, Ozero Waste of the Island, and also whoever it is that's trying to work on it, we need to find funds to up the morale of the community so that we can make this a successful program. And that's part of what we're searching for the funds to do. Um, so mahalo for your folks is mana'o. Um, I wish we could go into detail more about the, the system design, but I know that we're crunching on time. So we're here with your tickets, your tickets. Sorry, I only I already have one. Okay, so we we'll just do this one. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Jen. Just kidding. Please don't fire me. Um, I'm just kidding. So um, everybody, get your tickets out. 
And it's going to be 1737492. And when you when you win, you have to say Yorole at the top of your lungs. No, just kidding. 1737492. Anybody? Oh <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah, we're here. Okay, awesome, Jen. Next one, next one. She said, Yorole. Okay. Okay, one seven three seven four six two. I never just say that. Oh no, that was four nine two. Seven four six two. Is that you, Hannah? Oh, you're a here. <laughs> right on. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, next one. One seven three seven four five six. Now you don't break the Yorulehihu train now. <laughs> okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. Thank you, thank you. Okay, one seven three seven four seven nine. I was like, uh-huh, and what? <laughs> No, 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 you can have this card right now. She said, yeah, yeah, you're a you for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, one, seven, three, seven, four, seven, four. It's like people want the ticket, but they don't want to do your a you They said, never mind, I'm going to Last three, okay, four, three, nine. Last three, four, three, nine. Yay, Deva. There we go. Okay. We have um we have three more. Three more. Okay. Four four six. Last three numbers is four four six. You don't make me move, Alia. Oh, sorry. Why am I giving you that? You have to give her this. Okay. Okay, here we go. Last three numbers is four, three, two. Oh, really? You better shake up that bag, Jen. <laughs> She's like, I'm shaking it, I'm shaking it. Okay, we have one more, we have one more. Okay. Um, Don't forget to pick up your children. Okay. <laughs> Um, very, very super thankful to you folks for um, gathering here this evening. It was really important that we have at least even an opportunity to share about this system. Um, we're just really grateful because everybody has lives and everybody maybe lives far and everybody has cakey and it's literally eight, eight o'clock in the evening. So um, mahalo to each of you for coming out. We have one more ticket here, but um, yes. So Zero Waste HI dot org backslash event now just i mean we, we're gonna do a follow-up email to all of the emails on the list but in case you want to know like right now where you can read the full system design document and how you can provide feedback you can call me and be like hey i read this paper this is a no-go for me you know you can share your manao that way um you can go to again zero waste hi.org backslash event now and that you, you read about this event, but there's all the ways that you can engage with this information. Um, we'll do a follow-up email. Um, I, I think it's important for us to, it used to end with Hawaii Aloha, but um, I think we can end with a, um, a pule. Um, we have one last, yeah, we have one last one. Oh, that's great. We have one last ticket. Uh, what I was gonna say. Um, just big mahalo to my ohana who helped me at the very last minute up to Hannah and also my auntie and my tutu because I think I can do everything by myself. And I'll ask nobody for help except until five minutes before I have to get here. So thank you to everybody who, who um, can get a round of applause to the volunteers and all of the folks that came together to make this event possible. To the county, to Craig, to Peter, to um, to Perpetual in the Zoom land. Um, it's really, really late where they are. So and to Yuko, our slide shuffler and our Ticket hander and and the Ellen, our papaya bread master maker, um, just um, sasa for your manao aloha to all of the people of Kelkaha for having us um, mahalo piha. So, huh? oh, and to Kule, he said, oh, mahalo, mahalo, super mahalo.
Okay, the, the last one that we have is um uh four two 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 <laughs> four two two who has four no that's not four two two Oh my gosh, you really know. <laughs> She said, if I said, if I gave you my cards, then you would sing us a song. And I can sing us a song. I, I sure can. I sure can. That means we have two more cards now. Okay, we can pick two more. Let's get a round of applause for this auntie for giving us her cards. Okay. 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 This one is um four, five, zero. Okay, very good. And this last one is, oh, do you have it? This last one is four, four, eight. What? Monday. Monday. Okay, very good. Let's get a round of applause for the winners, folks. Okay, now I have to sing that song. If everybody can stand up and get in a circle, that'd be real good. We can make a circle this way, this way, this way. And hold hands if you can. That would be good. That would be real good. Yeah, join, join it in. Join it in. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Laura and um, um, Lionel, um, they had the cordless mics. Can you give them a round of applause? That was so awesome. Yes, yes, yes. Mahalo, mahalo. Uh, friends of Laura Casio. <laughs> um, we're going we're gonna to end this evening with Hawaii Aloha. And again, Reusable foodwear is one of many things that we do as an organization. Um, and I think for all of us here, it's a good is a good opportunity to see you all in person um, to celebrate this this movement of Aloha Aina and really working on systematizing and getting into the systems of how we're gonna do that actually. So just mahalo each of you for coming and we're gonna end with Hawaii Aloha. <laughs> Somebody got to do the echo. Okay, also get leftover beef luau, so you guys can take that. Get We brought some paper bowls that you can take. Don't take the Carol bowls now. I know they're pretty, but we're going to need to use those again. Um, and that was two gift cards, so you get two songs. Um, and aloha to our Zoom friends and family. Are they gone already? They're gone. Thank you so much for joining us, folks. Love you, folks. Nui loa, and see you folks later. We'll be in touch via email. Yeah.